Hi, I'm Brian Dickinson, and I want to tell you about the UVM factory, what it is and how we use it. So in UVM, we tend to use constrained randomization to generate the bulk of our stimulus. So here I have my YAP packet data item with a constraint saying that length has to be greater than zero, but less than 64. But for a given test, I may want to modify these data constraints. And we typically do this by creating a subclass. So here I have my short packet, which extends the YAP packet and adds a layered constraint now saying that the length has a maximum value of 19. But I have a problem now. How can I use my short packet instances instead of my YAP packet? In multiple locations in my code, I have handles on YAP packet. I'm creating instances of my YAP packet, and I want to use the short packet instead without having to go in and edit all my YAP packet handles to be short packets instead. So this is a standard problem in object orientation, and it has a standard solution, what we call a design pattern, and the standard solution here is called the factory. So the factory is a centralized location which creates class instances for you. So you don't call the constructor of a class directly yourself anymore. You ask the factory to create the instance for you. So to use the factory, first of all, we need to register all of our types with a factory. And then secondly, we have to create our class instances using a factory call instead of the new class constructor. And the reason why we do this is the factory can maintain a type override list. And here we can tell a factory every time you ask to create a YAP packet, return an instance of a short packet instead. So now when we get the request in from the create call to create a YAP packet, we can consult the type override list. We can see that we're being asked to return a short packet instance instead every time we're asked for a YAP packet. And we can return a short packet instance as the output of the create call. So to use the factory, again, we need these two things. First of all, you need to register all of your types with the factory. And we do this using a utility macro. So the object utility macro and the component utility macro, these register the class name with the factory and they also define the create method call. The second thing we need to do is, of course, is to create all of our instances via the factory call instead of calling the constructor directly ourselves. And the create call is used to create both data and component instances. Once we have these two things in place, we can use the type and the instance-specific overrides of the factory. So let's show you how you use this. So here's my YAP packet up here at the top, my data item, and I'm registering this with a factory through the object utility macro. And now in my monitor, my UVC monitor down here that uses my YAP packet, I would normally create an instance of the YAP packet by making a call to the constructor. But instead of that, what we're going to do is we're going to create the instance instead by using the factory method. Now, the syntax for this is a bit complicated, but basically we are calling a static method called create of a static property of the YAP packet type, which is the type of the handle. So it's basically handle equals handle type, colon, colon, type, underscore ID, colon, colon, create. And then you pass in two arguments to the create. The first one is the instance name, and the second one is the this pointer, so we know whereabouts in the hierarchy this particular packet was created. So all of your object instances should be created using factory calls instead of making direct, direct calls to the constructor. Because if you make a direct call to the constructor, the user can no longer use a type override to change that instance. OK, so let's show you how you use the type override. So here's my short packet. I've registered it with the factory using the object utilities macro. And this, had, this has the layered constraints saying that the length has to be less than 20. So now if I want to use this short packet a type in my test class or somewhere appropriate, I can just call the set type override by type method. This has two arguments. The first argument is the from type, yap packet. The second argument is the to type, short packet. So this sets an override in the factory, telling the factory to create short packets every time it's asked for a yap packet instance. 
So now here, every time I have a create call which goes via the factory, the create method will now create a short packet instance and return a reference to that and put it in the packet handle. Now there's various ways of doing a type override. We're using the type override by type because this uses static method calls. Here we have to call the get type as a static method of the type name in order to pass it into the type override method and we use this form because it allows much better compiler checking and is much easier to find any problems with your code. Now you don't only have to use the factory for data items, we can also use the factory for component items and this makes it very easy to customize or modify a reusable block. So for example here in my YAP driver component I have a send DUT which has an implementation for a protocol which drives data items into my design and the test. But for some reason that protocol doesn't do exactly what I want and I want to modify it. So what I can do is I can create a subclass of the YAP driver called config one driver and inside of here I can modify the send to DUT in actual fact what I'm doing is I'm just waiting for an event to occur and then calling the original base implementation from the YAP driver using a super call. And I've registered config one driver with a factory and I've also registered YAP one YAP driver with a factory. So now in my test bench file, all I need to do is to call this set type override by type to say any time that you ask for a YAP driver, create a config1 driver instead. Now obviously this has to go in a build phase method and it has to be set up before you create the YAP driver. If you do it after the YAP driver is created, it's too late and the type override won't be in effect. Now, um, type override by type is global, and this applies to every instance of a class in the hierarchy. But you may only want to do a type override in a certain part of the hierarchy, not everywhere. So there's a variation of the type override by type called the instance override by type. And this allows you to specify a hierarchy where the type overrides will apply. So here, using my set instance override by type, the first argument is a hierarchical path name. It's a string, so I can use wildcard characters inside of that string. So I'm here, I'm saying that any part of my hierarchy that contains agent 0 in its path will have its YAP packets converted to short packets via the factory. So that's a quick overview of the factory. I hope you find it useful.